These guys are coming in like Stalin or something and stamping out the, the right of these farmers to act together to protect themselves from the very robber barons that used to gouge them until the uh, wheat board was formed. Pat Martin leading the NDP push against conservative plans to end the Canadian wheat board monopoly next year. Now, politicians aren't the only ones divided on this issue. Wheat farmers themselves disagree on whether they should have the choice to market the fruit of their labors. What's in their best interests? What about you, the consumer? This is the kind of thing Canadians need to know. Joining us via Skype with his full support for the Canadian Wheat Board is Andrew Dennis. He's a wheat farmer in Carberry, Manitoba. Hi, Andrew. Hi there. Andrew, I want to give you a chance at the moment to uh, tell me whether or not Pat Martin is speaking for you when he says that uh, the Harper crew is, is being Stalinist, uh, incredibly totalitarian uh, for uh, wanting to end the wheat monopoly. Do you see the Harper boys as Stalinists? Um, I, I'm thinking Mr. Martin's using some very colorful language, but uh, certainly there's a lot of undem undemocraticness to the way they're going about it. And I think that's, uh, that's quite concerning for some of the people that actually elected this guy. And uh, I, I was at a booth last week at the Farm Progress, and there was a lot of conservatives went by and said, we voted for this guy, but we didn't vote for this. So I, I would say the, the principle of democracy is maybe not being upheld here very well. All right, so well, help us uh, shine. Right we, 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 we love democracy on this program, and we want, want you to help us shine the light on, on democracy. Generally, when we're talking democracy, we're talking about choices. I think both of us can agree that we want to have choice. Do you feel that uh, this decision to end the monopoly means that you'll no longer be able to choose to do business the way you're doing, sir? Uh, yeah, if we end the monopoly uh, around the globe, and the most recent experiment was Australia, it, it was attempted that you would have dual desk marketing, but that's almost the same as the uh, hardware store sticking around after the bigger chain gets to town. It's not really realistic. And uh, so, of course, your choices are going to be... Uh, they're going to be limited to a few multinational companies and uh, our collective selling as a group, which gives us some marketing power, is going to be moved from one entity down to tens of thousands of entities. That's not a lot of strength. So you're telling me that if most of the farmers agreed with you and most of the farmers wanted to deal uh, with the wheat board as they're doing right now, you're saying that uh, they wouldn't be able to get a good deal, even if most of the people wanted to continue doing what they're doing, they couldn't. They couldn't get a, a good deal in that kind of relationship. That's correct. Yeah, that 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 will that will end quite quickly in Australia. It lasted three years. I think if it lasted two here, it would be quite surprising. Now, in Australia, did 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 most of the farmers uh, go independent, or did most of the farmers decide to stay with their version of the wheat board? I think some of them stuck it out for a while, but I mean the money that they pulled them away with, which is only short-term money, collapsed the board, and then it uh, it dropped uh, quite quickly after that. And there's there, the European uh, milk market did the same thing; they dragged them away from their board once they offered them uh, the choice. They dragged them away with money, and the instant the board was gone, and the price of milk dropped to half. And when you've got a lot of debt, that's uh, that's not a crunch you want to be in, but it's one that we end up getting in if we do those types of things. All right. So, are you telling me that at the beginning, if you have a choice and other farmers have a choice, uh, you will go the independent route and deal with the big companies uh, to sell your grain? You'll forget about using the wheat board. But you're saying at some point the prices get not very good for you, and at some point you're, you're going to feel squeezed. So is that, is that the point, that you, you fear that kind of future? Is that your point, sir? Uh, that is exactly what usually happens. They, 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 it happens that way. Once you've got the two avenues, they, they'll pull you away from your board. Your board will collapse. It's happened over and over and over again. It's quite documented. And then, of course, the price collapses after that. And, of course, it has nothing to do with the board, but, in fact, it does. All right, well, help me with this. Why are there farmers on the other side of you? And we'll, we'll talk to one of them later. I think you know uh, who some of them are. You tell me your perspective on why there are farmers who are opposed to what you're saying, who, who can hardly wait, who are champing at the bit uh, to get rid of the wheat board monopoly. Why are they opposed to you? Vastly underinformed. 
vastly underinformed. So your, your your best take on why you've got opposition is that you know something that they don't. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of evidence to that. There's uh, almost never been a wheat board director voted in as a uh, opposer of the wheat board that didn't quite quickly after gaining knowledge through the many different floors of currency exchange and started to figure out what marketing really is. It's not like parking a machine and taking whatever the best price is at the end of your lane. That's not how marketing's done around the world with grain. They all almost always turned into wheat board supporters with some knowledge that they gained from time in there. If you haven't had some time with this, you're, you're, you're maybe working on, on, on a lack of information. And I've, I've met and discussed this with a lot of individuals. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of sad in some way that they might want to do this. In fact, they will end up hurting themselves, but they hurt their neighbors at the same time. And that's like, uh, that's like speeding, really. It's not something that, uh, you know, it's, you hurt people if you do something that's outside that, that venue. Andrew Dennis, what about all these farmers who are marketing other products, uh, not wheat, and uh, they're not using the wheat board, of course, and uh, they're quite happy and, and they're doing very well, and you probably know who some of them are as well. How come things are working out well for them without wheat boards? I think it's, uh, I mean, all grains run in tandem, and uh, thank goodness we have the wheat board because it props up the price of all the grains. When they, when they go up, they all go up. So if you've got somebody extracting a premium market in the world, you're going to get a premium by default from all the other ones. So, I mean, it's good that we still got the wheat board to help them out with that. That, that is very helpful. There is people that uh, would like to have those things on a board. You know, that's probably not in the realm of possibility. But when the board goes, not only wheat will take a hit, everything, of course, is going to take a bit of a hit because there's nothing propping, propping them up. There's, there's a lot of strength in that market when you collectively market and uh, it is hard to understand that uh, there is an acceptance and there is a support for the uh, monopolization of all input companies, the seed, fertilizer, crop production, fuel, the monopolization of our commodity purchasers. But when it comes to our monopoly, it is construed as being bad and there's no support for it. And Andrew election. Dennis, I've got to, I've got to move on. Uh, you, you've done a very good job. You're a stalwart for the Wheat Board, no doubt, and the NDP, and you've done a great uh, job for your side. Thank you very much. Good luck with your crop this year. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to you and your family. Andrew uh, Dennis is a farmer near Carberry, Manitoba. I want to hear from you on this or any other topic. Be a citizen of Adler Nation. Send us an email, charlesadler at sunmedia.ca. We read them all because your opinions matter to us a great deal. The food fight will continue with the other side of the story. And we'll also have industrial versus organic farming here on the program and the battle for consumer cash. Situational analysis from the front line coming up.